Hey Joe Berg, how are you guys doing? So it is Women's Day. Welcome to Women's Day. And for those of you that get the day off today, lucky you. Some of us unfortunately are working. So just a quick stop off at a uh, little beta shop in Melville to get a quick cup of coffee. And then we're heading off. So it looks like a bridge has collapsed in Johannesburg this morning um, on the M2. So we're going to head out there to have a look at that bridge that's collapsed. Okay, so currently just taking a quick little walk along the highway to get to this bridge that's fallen down. Um, pretty much not accessible from anywhere else. So we've had to park all the way down there somewhere and then just walk along the highway to kind of get to it we are live on the scene of the bridge collapse on the highway they are just about to start moving the tracks and we're going to chat to the guys from Sandwell um, he did tell me his name but you know what I'm going to let him introduce himself I'm Edwin Kruger I'm bridge network manager for Sandwell nationally I've been here since half past three this morning to assess the situation we've already appointed engineers moment we our main aim is to get the vehicles away now that the police have finished their investigations so the vehicles will be removed and then we've already organized with uh, a company called Jet Demolition to come in and start removing the bridge structure. That's fantastic. Now I don't want to put any sort of pressures on you guys but obviously if you'd like to get this cleared up as quickly as possible. Absolutely. We're going to do it we're hoping that it will be cleared by tomorrow, but until they actually start the work, one can't say for definite. But the initial indications are that we hope to be cleared by tomorrow. So as you can see, fire department on scene, they are ready and waiting should anything go wrong when this epoch truck gets moved. Okay, we're going to head up here and just get a little bit of a higher overview. So that gives you a rough idea of the entire scene. The bridge that's collapsed, the two trucks that are still sitting there. Um, we've got another, what looks like another truck on the other side of the highway as well. Um, let's take a walk over there and see if we can actually see what's happening over there. So there's the two trucks that have collapsed. Obviously, cleanup operations have started already. Jeff has been over here cleaning up on the road on this side. And then obviously the rest of the bridge that has collapsed over there. that side so it looks like three trucks in total and a passenger vehicle that were involved we have got the Ekrilani media spokesperson with us um, morning how are you doing fine thanks and how are you sir good 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 what time have you been here since I've been here since three o'clock because the incident took place just after one o'clock in the early hours of the morning and um, I've got people asking me how are the occupants of the car all right, uh, unfortunately we've got uh, four who sustained injuries and one was airlifted to the nearest hospital. Now, this freeway, which is the entry, as we know, it is very busy. Currently, it is close to traffic towards north, that is Tswane, and south, which is Deben. Now, all the stakeholders, law enforcement agencies, SAPS, including JMPD, we are here making sure that uh, we do not spend the whole day here because it is cold, as you can see. Now, what actually occurred, we've got four motor vehicles involved, including three trucks and one sedan, which is a Mercedes-Benz. Now, we do not know what is the cause of this footbridge to collapse, because it was no longer in use. It has been closed for as far as we can tell. Okay, great. Um, and how long do you think this road is going to be closed for? Do you have any idea? Let's say for now almost the whole day. As we know and see that we've got the uh, people coming to rescue the situation, engineers, and we are going to recover all these motor vehicles involved and to salvage and to clean the road. We'll be as quick as we can because this is a busy freeway. Okay, so Devin is asking how long the road will be closed. So we're hoping to have the road open by tomorrow morning if possible? If possible. Okay, great guys. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We're still waiting for this rescue operation to carry on um, that is part of the job kind of just being somewhere and hanging around and waiting for things to happen so you can capture it so just taking a couple of seconds off while they all get all set obviously it's going to take pretty much the whole day and most of the night for this to recover um, hopefully they can have this highway open for tomorrow because you do not want to be sitting trying to get around Joburg without this highway open okay, so apparently Ishmael Vardy has arrived on scene we're going to go over and get a briefing from 
and to find out exactly what is happening and what the thoughts are on the situation. Okay, from what we understand, it's uh, just around slightly past midnight, uh, early this morning, uh, this bridge collapsed. The causes of the bridge, uh, the causes of the collapse is uh, uncertain at this stage. Uh, Sunwell has invited independent uh, structural engineers to make an assessment of the situation. The police were on scene, they had done their own investigations, taken all the photographic information, interviewed people, etc. So the exact causes remain unknown at this stage. What we are told is that at least, uh, you know, we're fortunate that there have been no fatalities uh, in this particular incident. But five uh, drivers and motorists, uh, passengers were injured. Uh, all of them have been taken to hospital and they are receiving treatment at this stage. I'm told that one, one uh, woman was particularly serious and I'm hoping that in the course of the day or tomorrow sometime I would be able to visit her. Uh, from what we understand, this is a decommissioned pedestrian bridge. Uh, it was constructed in 1978. It has not been in use for a good number of years. Uh, the, the place was completely fenced off, as you could have seen. But over the last few years, it does seem as if the guardrails were stolen. But we don't suspect that that could be a factor in terms of the collapse. I mean, this, uh, this is quite a serious accident where the entire structure has collapsed. So that's the information that we have uh, on hand at the moment. People within the um, surrounding areas have noted some seismic activity, kind of tremors. Is that, are you investigating, looking into that at all? I think the investigators will look at all of the possibilities and I don't want to speculate as to the causes of this. Uh, what I can say is this, that look, the site has now been sent, uh, handed over to Sanwa. Uh, the people who are starting with the demolition and the clearance, my, our guess is that that could take anything between 24 and 48 hours. So the road will remain closed at least for today. We're absolutely sure about that. If we can clear off some portions of the road, we might open it. But it might even mean that uh, traffic will be disrupted tomorrow as well. This is one of the busiest sections of the of our freeway network in Kauteng. So we're advising our motorists to, uh, to, to plan their trips much more carefully. Uh, if they particularly be going to the airport, uh, airport, there will be detours, the traffic officials are on site. But I think that uh, we should expect uh, some serious disruption over the next 24 hours at least. Where else can members of the public find information besides obviously the obvious media channels? Will there be information going out via the Facebook pages, the city's Twitter uh, stream? I think we will be releasing information as we, as you know, updating the information as we get it. Uh, Bruce is here from Sanval, he's the head of the communication, so periodically there will be updates. As soon as the road is clear and it's safe, we will open it. We won't you know, put unnecessary pressure on our motorists. But I think that this is a massive job. It's not going to be something that can be cleared in one or two hours. It's going to take much longer than that. So would you suggest that members of the public actually start making alternative plans for tomorrow just in case? I think certainly for today. We're hoping that by late tonight we could clear off the site, but I, I don't want to say for sure. Uh, but I think the, there will be periodic updates. We will be communicating with the public. And uh, people should be looking at social media platforms and all, obviously on uh, the media reporting on TV, etc. Uh, but I think people should take precautions and measures uh, and plan their trips much more carefully over the next few months. I think that is it from us from the scene today. I'm going to head back to the office to go and get this all cut together and into a full story. Um, that's one of the hardest things I think about doing this is you've got to at some stage figure out when is a good time to leave the scene or what, of the story that you're doing and actually get the story out because there's no point shooting the story if you don't get it into, out in time for people to watch it you know there is always a race between the different media organizations to see who can get things out first and today that's going to be me okay so back at my office um we want to try and get this video out for you guys as quickly as possible and then i want to spend some time with my family so i think that will be it from me for today yeah, catch you guys tomorrow. Cheers, Joburg.